Okay, I just want to share my base map that I've been working on for the last several weeks on a K24A2 build that I've had for a little over a year. Uh, more important things were just uh, making the car reliable and safe, uh, finishing up some electrical wiring, the suspension alignment, some work with the interior, organizing things, and now I'm just starting to get into these maps the spark maps, ignition, cam angles, fuel, all that stuff. And I've been using chat GPT to help me understand it and get a grip of it. And chat GPT has helped me make tremendous progress in the last four weeks. And I wanted to show you exactly how. So this map, let me move this off to the side. Now, the reason I'm doing, first off, I want to do this video because there's a lot of um, discrepancies and technicalities with tuners and advice. A lot of it is pretty much advising people not to get too brave or confident too soon and possibly cause some damage to your engine. And nobody wants that to happen. But this, I'm going to show you how I know this is a safe tune. And I'm going to share with you the things that I've learned and what I've done. Now, this used to be, let me put it on the field trims because that's what you guys are used to seeing more often. This used to be a base map. Now, let me see if I can, let me show you something. Well, to cut to the chase, you know what a base map looks like because you can go to new calibrations open it up, choose your you know model car with the computer and the engine you're dealing with and you get a base map. Now, this base map has been revised many, 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 many times over by myself. Now, just to keep this video short, I'm gonna show you something I did today in a parking lot. It was a Walgreens parking lot. Now, just idle speed is gonna be a thousand RPMs. It's pretty much where we idle anywhere between 900 to 1,000 RPMs. And if you're in first gear and you stomp on the gas, you're gonna end up in this area, okay? From 500 down is your RPMs. And these numbers, this upper column, what they're number 10, this is a measure of engine strain. It's a measure of how much power you're demanding from the engine before it can catch up and give you that power you're asking for. So if you're in first gear and you're at a thousand RPMs and you're just rolling, you're just rolling in gear and you stomp on the gas, you're gonna shoot straight this way. And as the RPMs go up, this is gonna start to go up with the RPMs, but it's also gonna come closer this way because as the, R as the vehicle catches up to RPMs, and the throttle demand that you're asking for it, the engine stress reduces as the, as the engine catches up to the power you're demanding. So you're gonna be dropping down, you're gonna be coming kind of this way. But to keep things simple, when you're in first gear, okay, this is what I wanted to do. I wanna put the car in first gear, let it roll, and I just wanna stomp on it, and I want the quickest throttle response that I could possibly get without getting any, you know, detonating engine knock or anything like that. So, where is my, uh, my graph? Let's wait on here. So I'm gonna show you before and after. Now, this is what it looks like when I'm in first gear and I stomp on it, okay? And you know you're in first gear when you look down here. You see I'm in first gear. And I'm basically just rolling. Vehicle speed, four miles an hour, 1400 RPMs. 67% throttle, that's kind of important. But the value for 67% for is your maps, which you want to look up here, your kilopascals. Okay, now if this is already, if this is, once you hit 100, that's max. 100 kilopascals is going to put you all the way at the very end of this chart. So what I wanted to do was stomp on the gas and see how responsive the car was, which it really wasn't. Now, let me move this off to the side. 
over here. I basically just put my foot on the gas. That's what this lens. I put my foot on the gas. I made sure I was at a thousand RPMs just to be solid. And then I stomped on it for about a, a, a second. Now you can see the throttle demand comes up. Your KPA skyrockets because your car is not even moving. You're basically at idle speed. The car hasn't even had a chance to move. You just stomped on it in a fraction of a second. And now you have all this engine strain up here. And as the RPMs come up, your engine strain goes down. Because now the engine, you're giving the engine a chance to catch up to your power demand. Now, the amount of throttle that I gave it, 75%. I'm at 100% KPA map. That's max engine load. And you can see the angle. You can see the angle of the RPM, which is this red line. Just take note, right? Came up, you know, so-so so so now where's my knock second thing you want to look at is knock which is something that is it's a no-no you really don't want to get knock and what knock is is basically the combustion in the cylinder happening all by itself before the piston has a chance to reach top dead center and get pushed down by the combustion that either happens by setting an ignition too soon you're igniting the fuel way before the piston comes close to the top or it happens if your engine is overheating you're exceeding 250 degrees and now you have the added element of higher temperatures with the compression of the piston coming up to compress the fuel and you're gonna it's gonna ignite on its own before the fuel injectors have a chance or i mean excuse me before the spark plugs have a chance to ignite it so we're gonna look at knock really quick and you see where it says zero count we had no dog detonation before the attempt and after the attempt we still have zero knock but this is a measure of this is another measure of not exactly engine strain but it's the capacity or the ability to potentially have knock because you're coming into close quarters now we came close knock limit we're at minus three degrees and knock control is working at 15 percent we're still okay it's safe it's still okay after making the changes that i made we come up to here where i saved it i did a little test run i liked it and i saved everything now the reason you see more blue lines up here that's dedicated to the knock is because the acceleration event lasted longer than the prior one you can see how narrow that is versus I had my foot on the pedal for a lot longer. Now, first thing I want to show you is look how aggressive and responsive the RPM line is. Okay, that's a huge difference. Now, if you look at the TPS, I was given an 80, 86% gas. And on the prior one, if I come here to the, to the, to the peak of it, I was given it 75%. So that's just 10% more fuel, 10% more fuel. But look, look how, look at the dramatic difference on the throttle response. Okay, we're both at max KPA. Um, I was doing seven miles an hour when this happened. And on the other one, I was doing five miles an hour. So we are still, we are still pretty much really close identical. These are very comparable events that were recorded in data logs. Now, knock control after the updated changes is only working 11%. Where just before knock control was working 14% and we weren't getting much out of the engine versus right now, I'm getting amazing engine throttle response out the gate in first gear and still nothing to worry about with knock. If anything, this is a slightly healthier condition than the prior tune with the prior log. Look at the difference. Now, I'm gonna be making more videos in the future. I don't wanna make this too long, but this is just an example of how much progress I've made in such a short amount of time with uh, ChatGPT. You just have to get used to it and you have to learn how to ask the questions you want them to be 
very specific and very precise and you want to share all your information that you know about your engine with ChatGPT because it remembers that when it answers future questions and over the long run, after ChatGPT taking so many things into consideration with the information you're feeding it, it gives you back very useful information and it is an amazing tool to navigate through our K-Pro. I'm using K-Pro V4, but that's irrelevant, all right? Take it easy.